At the start of 2024, the future looked bleak for my home track of Motor Mile Speedway. In 2023, the facility had experienced some ups and downs. The complex was renamed Pulaski County Motorsports Park, a bit of a throwback to the track's days as Pulaski County Speedway. They hosted events for the Smart Modified Tour, the SRX Series came to town, and they held Saturday night races once or twice a month. I went to plenty of these events. While the car count wasn't akin to the track's glory years, there was plenty of great racing all around this facility. Unfortunately, the track suffered the same reality as many other short tracks, low attendance. The lowest point came on August 4th, 2023, when Mark Ebert, the owner of the Rusty Wallace Racing Experience, released a statement that his group had not renewed their lease to the facility beyond 2023. In his statement, Ebert would say, quote, We work tirelessly to rebuild the fan base at the racetrack, and it is tremendously disappointing to me that we could not bring back the fans in the numbers that would allow us the revenue to pay a reasonable lease or purchase the racetrack. The Cars Tour declined to return after disappointing attendance. Our SRX event was amazing at every level, but was well short of sold out. We really tried to bring you great events. The attendance levels were just not enough to support these events." End quote. After Ebert's official departure on November 30th, the Motor Mile ownership group resumed ownership of the facility. The plans at the time were to have a couple monster truck shows, the Tour of Destruction, and for an event at the drag strip. However, no plans for a weekly racing series at either the Speedway nor the Dragway, although they would be available for rental for individual days, special events, or for a recurring series if there were to be interest from an outside party or organization. To say this whole series of events was gut-wrenching would be quite an understatement personally. I practically grew up at this facility. No matter what I was going through, whether it be the best of times or the worst of times, I had always felt at home here. And for the first three months of 2024, it seemed as if my home track had suffered the same fate as many others across the nation. Then, April happened. On April 3rd, 2024, Sheeler Motor Mile gifted the 152-acre motorsports complex to the county of Pulaski. The group intends to lease the facility back from the county for the next three years to continue the existing functions of the track and to make the eventual complete transition as smooth as possible when the training period is over. At this point, there seems to be a glimmer of hope for my home track, and with this newfound hope, I began to reminisce about some of my favorite memories at the track, times that I got to see the Hooters Pro Cup Series come to town, the times that I got to see some of the greatest late model stock car drivers in history make laps and sit in victory lane. But for my most fond memory, I'll have to go back to June 28, 2014, for what has been dubbed Motor Mile Speedway's Greatest Race. Top two barrel off into turn number three. Lemons dives it in deep. They touch out of turn number four. They're coming to the strike. Two Since footage of the whole event is unobtainable, I'll be focusing on what footage has been uploaded from the two twin 75 late model races through Motor Mile Speedway's race capper. We begin on lap 60 of the first late model race of the night, where an intense battle for the lead is underway between perennial frontrunner Matt Bowling and the defending national champion Lee Pulliam, with Dylan Bassett close behind in third, who's making his first ever start at the track tonight. For nine laps, Bowling and Pulliam battle hard before Pulliam decides it's go time and muscles his way around the 83. Unfortunately for Lee, it left Dylan Bassett in the prime position to capitalize. To contend with the national champs in trouble. Dylan Bassett has the lead at the start finish line. Will he lead the one that matters most? The top two, two abreast down the back straight away for the final time. It's Dylan Bassett to the inside of Lee Pulliam. Pulliam's fading. Bassett has the lead. Second and third make contact. Dylan Bassett wins. While the first one of the night had a definitive winner, the same couldn't be said for race number two. We begin the second race on lap 20, as Dalton Sargent and Mike Looney lead the field down the backstretch after a restart. Coming off of turn four, the leaders make contact, sending Looney into Pulliam and causing a calamity in turn one, taking out multiple front runners, including race one winner Dylan Bassett. Into turn number one, a multi-car crash takes out the front runners. Lee Pulliam, the champ is involved. Looney is in it. Justin Johnson, the majority of the top 10 involved in a vicious collision, sparked when Mike Looney and Lee Pulliam collided on the front straight. Peyton Sellers manages to get by Looney as he spins back up the track, while Adam Long and Tommy Lemons Jr. go all the way down to the apron to miss Michael McGuire and Lee Pulliam. After a red flag, the race gets back underway. Sargent didn't get a good restart, which allows Bowling to regain the top spot. 
going down the back stretch, it's double file behind the 83. Sellers and Lemons work their way around Long and set their sights on the top two. Long surrenders a spot to Tommy Lemons Jr. in the process. Watch out for Tommy Lemons Jr. after a dismal race number one. Lemons could be the dark horse in race number two. After a caution from Matt Bowling, the pay window would be wide open for any driver to park it in victory lane. Sellers clears Sargent off of two and tries to set sail on the field. Lemons fights to get around the 45 of Sargent, utilizing the top lane the top groove Tommy was so well known for using. For 20 laps, Lemons follows Sellers both setting a quick enough pace to put a gap on the third place car of Adam Long. On lap 63, Lemons makes a move to try to take the lead, but Sellers uses the high side that Tommy loves against him. Lemons keeps peeking his nose underneath the rear of the 99, biding his time to take the lead whenever the opportunity presents itself. With three laps to go, Lemons makes his move with time running out fast. Tommy is putting his left side tires on the apron to try to find grip. Coming off of turn two with two to go, Sellers gets a great corner exit using the top lane, but Tommy dives it in deep as they come to the white flag. First comes down to one final lap. White flag is in the air. Sellers leads it. Who will lead the last one? Out of turn number two for the final time. They may have touched. Top two barrel off into turn number three. Lemons dives it in deep. They touch out of turn number four. They're coming to the stripe two abreast. The timing and scoring registered a 0.00 margin of victory. Both drivers parked in victory lane as they awaited the decision. I still vividly remember standing on the front stretch with my dad as post-race interviews were happening. I got to see this photo directly from the photographer's camera. Initially, the win was given to Sellers. The following Tuesday, at 2 p.m., the decision was reversed. Tommy Lemons Jr. was declared the winner of Motor Mile Speedway's Greatest Race. It is still the closest finish in Motor Mile Speedway history. Just didn't have enough from the guys, you know. I tried to keep leaping down all I could and keep it wound up all I could. But he finally got tired of me over here and uh, hooked me up. So uh, that's part of it. And uh, congratulations to him and uh, Dylan. You know, Dylan drove a heck of a race. So. Uh, You know, just uh, just gave them all. That's all you can do, and uh, just came up a little short tonight. Pulia is going to win the inaugural Old North State Nationals and take home a thirty thousand dollar payday. I don't know. I'm speechless. This is probably one of the best wins I've had so far this year. Um, probably overall too. I, I truly didn't know. I didn't have a clue, you know. And, and, and Tommy pulled up beside me going in the back stretch, and I don't think he really knew. You know, it was just, just a tough battle right there. You know, he, he had the preferred line, and uh, I couldn't keep a good enough run up off, off underneath him. And uh, closest race I've ever been in, but, uh, you know, like I said, a hell of a show for the fans. It had to be.